Good morning to everyone. I have not been speaking to you by video call from the two weeks that I have been writing letters to you. I've decided to take a moment to address you on a few issues today. I hope um, that you are doing well, uh, but I also understand that many of us are currently struggling um, because many of the practices are not operating. By the way, today I'm wearing my hat not for the same reason that I gave you the last time. I'm wearing my hat because my hair has grown very tall and I am not able to cut my hair uh, since I cannot travel to a barber shop or anything like that. So my hair looks like I am Samson at Sada. Um, yesterday, the president has given us an indication of where the government's thoughts are in terms of easing the lockdown. More importantly, uh, he has um, indicated the five phases uh, that are going to govern the smart lockdown. So it's more like the load shading of lockdown. That's what I call it. That has called upon Sada to consider what the president had to say as well as respond to it. So let me give you this few information. One, the association has decided to put together a COVID-19 response team, um, which is made of members of the profession based on their expertise. We have been able to create what I call an extended dental practice committee. It's being chaired by Dr. Swanepoel. And we then formed four subcommittees based on what we believe we needed to work on. The first committee is the clinical support, is the clinical protocols development team, which is being coordinated by Dr. Uh, Blakey Lawrence Swart. We then formed a second team, um, which is dealing with uh, the financial relief for uh, members of the profession is being led by Dr. Solomons. Then we have one that deals with the coding as well as um, uh, hygiene, and that is led by Dr. Oli van Skalkweg. We then have uh, one more team which is dealing with the issue of well being. And as well as mentoring, as you will appreciate that during this time, with what we are facing, including possible closures of many practices, um, the inability to honor our payments to our creditors is taking a toll psychologically, mentally, on some of the members. And this is the reason why this fourth team was formed. We are going to call upon, very soon we're going to be receiving a, an invitation to call you to a meeting on Monday, this coming Monday, at 4 o'clock. It's going to be a webinar, a Zoom webinar. We can only accommodate 100, so it's going to be a first-come, uh, first-served basis. We will then give you an interim feedback on what we have done so far. And having spoken to the teams, I think you will be glad to know that we have moved very, very far. Uh, let me start briefly. So the clinical protocol development, um, the document is now being reviewed by various institutions and uh, professionals, including uh, the committee of deans, including um, some of our partners internationally and other specialized societies within the profession. And that document should be ready 
very, very soon. We will give you that uh, direct feedback on Monday. What I do want to indicate, because I've received many calls already this morning, or in WhatsApps and email, is that yes, we are aware of the five phases. We have expected that to happen. So the document that we are going to finally release will actually include the five phases. We are going to try and give guidance as to what is it that can be done in dentistry in all those five phases. We obviously want to ensure that the profession gets back to work. Um, the, 20, the, 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 the few days that we've been on lockdown, the month plus, has been very devastating indeed. Very, very devastating, and we understand that. I must tell you that the people that are working on these protocols understand this very, very well. And they are addressing most of those issues that you have written to me, and some of the issues that maybe you have not even thought of. The financial relief resourcing team um, has taken time to look at ways and places where you can get relief. We are going to be releasing a document today from that team that will give you some, some feedback. That document remains a live document because as we change and as we go along, uh, we have to update it. The coding and hygiene team is working on what the standard and the benchmark of the PPE, as well as how do we deal with the increased cost of having to apply this PPE? Because as you would understand, it does not, it's not accounted for in the current pricing from the third party funders. And we need to deal with that and engage with the third party funders to actually come to the party and allow us to charge for that PPE in the way that it's required. Another issue is between patients, there is going to be downtime. We need to find a way to actually deal with that as well. Um, once everything is done, it will be uh, 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 communicated to the medical aid schemes. They have and they are waiting, they are aware that we are busy with this and they are waiting to see our, our document. So we will be sending this to them. I can see that Dr. Cronier is asking, are the medical aid scheme going to allow us to do more work with a different level of generate, to generate an income to survive this? I believe the guidance that we are giving will allow us to, will allow you guys to do things in a more responsible manner and in a manner that is standardized. Many of you have also asked me if we can actually define um, what emergencies are. I have asked my team to work on this um, and they again will be coming back with feedback on what we can do. I do want to indicate though that emergencies are not the same for everyone. So whatever we are going to come up with, it's not going to, it's not going to be an exhaustive list. It is going to be uh, just a list, maybe up to an 80%. And we will again add something to the fact that you must, as a professional, use your professional expertise, professional knowledge, um, to define what may become an extra to that list uh, belonging to your particular practice. We will never be able to give you a 100% list, but we will give you a benchmark that you can work from. I hope that will assist many of you. The last two things that I wanted to indicate is that the well-being and, high, and mentoring team led by Dr. Um, Anita Kusal will be starting to engage with you very soon and you will be able to tap into the resourcing that they have just to assist you to cope with the situation as it is. We hope that these four pillars or four streams are really going to assist members um, to cope um, with where we are. I do ask you again on Monday, four o'clock, you, you will receive today an invitation to join us and to join these uh, committees giving feedback and interim feedback, and you will have an opportunity to ask 
questions. It can only accommodate 100. And if you cannot get in for whatever reason, um, the webinar is going to be posted on the SADA website so you can actually download or view or listen to it online immediately after we finish. I see uh, Dr. Dirksen is asking periodontal practices. Can they begin work on the 4th? I would like you to also um, uh, wait until we have given you the feedback on Monday um, so that we have covered all the bases. I'm not able to give you that feedback today. Um, and Dr. Cronje is asking again, will DP uh, also adjust our indemnity during the different levels? Part of uh, the members of this team is actually Alistair McKelvey. I've asked him to join. So these type of issues are going to be uh, taken care of. And you can ask that question to him as well on Monday. He will be there. But we are looking at all bases to ensure um, that it's covered. Dr. Kronia, I understood exactly what you are uh, meaning. I knew that you're not saying DPI, but you meant DPL. In actual fact, it's no longer DPL. It's actually called DP only, dental protection. So this is where we are at. <clears throat> Lastly, I'm aware uh, on two fronts. One, that most of what has been given by the president so far seems to actually uh, leave the health practitioners outside. We are required, or you guys are required to be in the forefront, but it doesn't seem that the financial relief, or most of the financial relief, are actually addressing issues that belong to you. We are, we are, we are, you will see an email asked, uh, coming out again, it has already been released, where I'm dealing with this issue. Uh, we are going to engage with the government again to see what is it that they can do further. Also, in terms of the medical aid, uh, the cost of the PPE, we have written, as, excuse me, as of yesterday, I've written to the medical aid scheme to consider uh, making provision in terms of their benefits for the increased cost of the PPE, which was not covered uh, prior to this pandemic because nobody foresaw it, nobody knew it was going to happen. And it will be unfair to expect the dental practitioner to actually bear the cost when we actually are all facing this pandemic and all you are doing is to try and do your best to treat patients in the best manner possible. I would like to see if there are one or two few questions and then I'll take that. Uh, Dr. Leng Lengham says, as dentists, we do use our clinical discretion to classify emergency treatment, but I think the fear is that our discretion, let me see if I can read more, will be questions. Absolutely agreed with you, hence we find that it's now necessary for SADA to give you a benchmark, but that benchmark will still give you an allowance to use your discretion, your professional discretion. But what will be important is that when you claim for that, you will have to be able to back it up if it's not uh, specifically written on the protocol or on the definition or the list that we are going to uh, uh, publish. Uh, Dr. Siddharth is asking, please share Zoom link here as well if possible. I am not able to share it here now. Uh, they were busy finalizing it, but immediately in the next uh, one hour, you will actually receive that link. I'm going to try and get it sent to you via email as well as your uh, a text message so that um, all of you receive it. Is there any other question that I can take before I conclude this meeting? I do not see, let me just quickly go up, I do not see any other question. Okay, in that, if there are no other questions, I do appreciate, it was just a quick call. We're going to give you more details on uh, Monday, 4 o'clock. Please look out for the invitation to come and attend that webinar. Thank you very much.